Oh, well, hi there. Welcome to yet another Late Show. How many more in this room? Including tonight? Including tonight. Including tonight. Three. This is it. This is, th this is, this is it. So each one is like a precious jewel. <laughs> No, they're not. I'm sorry. Each one is like a fresh turd. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. The country is slowly emerging from a crisis that gripped not just America, but the entire globe. And we're still surveying the damage of this unprecedented plague that lost to Joe Biden on November 3rd. And I'll give you the latest in my unfortunately ongoing segment, exactly what you thought, but worse than you imagined. First up. The January 6th Capitol riot this morning, the Senate dropped their in-depth analysis of all the security failures in a 127-page joint report, which was a product of more than three months of hearings and interviews and reviews of thousands of pages of documents. Of course, everyone saw it on TV as it happened on January 6th, making this the rare book where they made the movie first. <laughs> Leading up to the insurrection. The threat was not taken seriously, in part because the FBI alerted the Capitol Police of potential war only the night before the MAGA rally, attaching the warning to a casually worded email. And the Late Show has acquired a copy of that email. Dear Capitol Popo, what's up, my dudes? Got any plans for the weekend? I'll be chilling and solving crimes. Oh, and BT dubs, possible war tomorrow. See you attached. Bye. How's the show going so far? So you know, we only got three more of these. Gems. That's it. That's it. Each one. Precious. Rare miniatures. For weeks, the Capitol Police had troubling. <laughs> does, it, does it feel like I'm phoning in these last three? Not at all. I'm fully committed, right? Sure. Should I be this tired two days back after my vacation? Not a great sign. For weeks, the Capitol Police had troubling information. For instance, the fact that rioters had been sharing a map of the Capitol complex's tunnels and possible rally points for would-be conspirators, the map also provided rioters with bathroom locations. Now, because leadership didn't take the threat seriously, the Capitol Police were not prepared. For instance, during the attack, an officer recalled hearing a lieutenant repeatedly ask over the radio, does anybody have a plan? Oh, somebody had a plan. And he sat in the Oval Office pounding a bucket of chicken while his followers carried it out. But bizarrely, this report avoided addressing any role that the former president may have played in inciting the attack. He's the whole reason the attack happened in the first place. That's like talking about Christmas Eve and never mentioning Santa. Who did you leave the cookies and milk out for? Rudolph the Red-Eyed Rat? Next up on EWYTBWTYI, we're learning the last president's desperate attempts to cling to power are even desperater and clingier than we thought. These revelations are all about former chief of staff and man saying, pull my finger, damn it. Mark Meadows, according to newly released emails in the final days of the last administration, Mark Meadows pushed the Department of Justice to investigate election fraud conspiracy theories, including one that claimed Italians had used satellites to remotely switch votes from the ex-president to Biden. That's right. He thought the election was stolen by space Italians. <laughs> now, this is obviously insane. First off, and no offense, but Italy isn't exactly known for its cutting edge orbital technology. I believe their space shuttle is two bottles of Chianti taped to a Vespa. That didn't stop Meadows from violating DOJ guidelines to pressure the Justice Department to look into what's known in the online idiot community as Italygate. Not to be confused with the Italygate that I personally uncovered, which is that at a certain point, even breadsticks are limited. This Italy gate claims that Barack Obama took one of the pallets of cash that was sent to the Iranians as part of the Iranian nuclear deal and gave it to some Italians who used the money to create some software that they downloaded into American voting systems by satellite that switched votes to Biden. Of course, it's always the simplest answer. As I speak, those same satellites could be beaming out invisible pro-Biden Italiano space rays. It explains this message I got on my GPS. In half a mile, 
Turn left on a Joe Biden. Now you might be thinking, did we already know all of this, Steve? First of all, it's Stephen. Okay. And yeah, we knew that the former president tried to use his office to steal an election and through some combination of incompetence and malice allowed his supporters to overrun the Capitol. The answer to all of that is yes. But as with everything Malomar Gaddafi did, just because he's gone doesn't mean we don't have to still deal with it. He's like the guy who farted on his way out of the room. He may not be around anymore, but we're still stuck in here. And until someone cracks the window of justice, we're going to have to keep inhaling his phileo farts. We just need to keep reminding ourselves that America doesn't have to smell like this. <laughs> of course, there was some other news today. One assumes, I don't know, because this morning there was a massive global internet outage that affected news giants like CNN and the New York Times. It even affected the print edition's front page story. Error 503, newspaper unavailable. Non-news sites were hit too, like Etsy, Hulu, PayPal, Reddit, Twitch, and Amazon. That one affected me because I needed to order a new battery for my bathroom scale and Amazon wasn't available and 911 was no help. Wouldn't even send an ambulance to get me way to the hospital and this is an emergency because I have to fit back into a suit on Monday. Again. Three more shows. Once the New York Times was up and running, they weren't out of the woods because today the old gray lady published this actual story, fields of watermelons found on Mars, police say. And to think all this time Matt Damon was eating poop potatoes when he could have been feasting on poop watermelons. Also, not the most important detail, but police say? Why are the police in charge of Mars watermelons? Guess that explains the new crime procedural law and order space gourd unit. Gourd, gourd. <laughs> now, shortly after this massive story of interplanetary picnic fruit broke, it was taken down from the website and replaced with the notice the New York Times published this story in error. A lot of people are saying this is probably just a test of their publishing platform that was never meant to go public, but those people are fools. This is a cover-up on a galactic scale. Jimmy, put up a picture of Mars. Okay, zoom in and enhance. Seeds! It's the red planet because the whole thing is a watermelon and those aren't ice caps, that's rind! In other the internet doesn't work news, I can't believe that wasn't more shocking to the other two people in the room. I just proved that one of the planets is a slice of watermelon, and they're like, yeah, what, what other stories you got? <laughs> it's almost as if we're making this <laughs> up. <laughs> in other the internet don't work no more news, we just learned that the largest password collection of all time has been leaked on a popular hacker forum consisting of 8.4 billion passwords, which means, for safety's sake, here we go, I have to update all of my passwords. Hold on to password one, two, three, four. The complete password dump document is 100 gigabytes and is called Rock You 2021. Probably a reference to the Queen song, We Will Rock You, which is ironic since Rock You 2021 is my password to fatbottomgirls.com. I'm joking, obviously. It's password one, two, three, four. Of course, pretty soon we won't need the internet as much because we'll have something called real life. And I'll tell you all the latest in the fight against the pandemic in tonight's edition of The Vaccine. <laughs> Still here? 
The vaccine rollout has gone well, but we've still got a ways to go. In fact, nationally, vaccination rates have gone down, turning what officials hoped would be the last mile of the coronavirus immunization campaign into a marathon. And no one's ready for a marathon at this point. Just getting up off the couch makes my nipples bleed. With, with vaccination rates slowing, what, that's too much? Men can't have nipples? Look in the mirror, buddy. Look in the mirror at your nipples tonight. Promise me. Done. Take some photos. With vaccination rates slowing, some states are getting creative with their incentives, like Washington State, which will allow adults to claim a free marijuana joint when they receive a COVID-19 vaccination shot. Don't take it. It's a trap. Only narcs call it a marijuana joint. Would you care to puff upon this cannabis cigarillo or perhaps some cocaine-flavored nasal powders? I'm a young hip bay like you, fam. Smash and subscribe. If Mary Jane isn't your friend, you could get the jab in Hawaii, which is entering vaccinated residents into a lottery to win a Las Vegas trip for two. Another lucky winner will receive Christ of the Deep which they describe as a profoundly powerful painting of Jesus Christ underwater embracing the light, surrounded by mermaid angels and colorful reefs. Guys, this just got serious. If you don't get the vaccine, you are hurting sea Jesus. When there was only one set of footprints on the beach, it is because I was under You have trouble with that one? You're an atheist. I happen to know that you're an atheist. Don't give me you any problems with the Jesus joke. What I have to deal with. By far, but only three more nights. See, the thing about being live on stage is that everybody's there. Like, Mark, I see more often. Chris, I have to look at him to see him on stage. Here, I can't escape him. Like, literally, the camera's right here. He's there. He's right there the whole time. So if he picks up this little, he's got a Sharpie. He's got a Sharpie pen that he keeps with him. And if, there, if I f up in any way, he goes like this. I just, I see this, like this out of the corner of my eye. Doesn't mark it down here where I can't see it. He marks it up on the top of the little stand. So like, mm, not gonna undermine your confidence at all, but just want you to know, you f up enough that I'm using a permanent marker for fear that any ordinary pen, if like rain came in and erased it, all of CBS would collapse from how much I <laughs> up in the monologue. Three more days. It's not getting to me though. I managed to get out the end without even you even knowing that this bothered me. Is that amazing? 15 months, couldn't really tell I was bothered by it. What you got, old man? Is that all you got? Give it to me, I can take it. I'm fine. This is a bit, obviously. It's what I do. I'm doing a bit. Don't mean any of this. Woo! <laughs> By far, the wildest incentive comes from West Virginia governor and Texas Roadhouse patron, who you know is about to call the waitress sweetheart, Jim Justice. Governor Justice announced last week that West Virginia will give away guns as a vaccine incentive as part of their take a life, leave a life policy. To round out the most West Virginia, West Virginia prize of all time, the state will also give away two brand new custom outfitted trucks, five lifetime hunting and fishing licenses, and 25 getaways to West Virginia state parks. By getaway, I assume they mean a chance to get away from the people who just want to truck a gun and a license to kill. Well, one person out there enjoying the post-vaccine freedoms is Delaware Senator and man who just realized why this subway car is empty. Tom Carper. Carper drew some attention this week when he was spotted at a gas station in his home state dressed like this. Whoa! Looks like gas isn't the only thing Tom's been pumping. I think it's time for the Senate to step aside because this is obviously the world's most deliberative body. I gotta say, the most shocking part of this is that someone with a camera said, hey, that older gentleman standing with his nips to the wind next to a 2001 Chrysler town in the country kind of looks like Delaware Senator Tom Carper. I'm getting 75 cents from TMZ. Dun, dun, dun. Jimmy, can I please say that picture again? What in the world is he doing with his hands? Holding the belt buckle on his bathing suit? 
unless that's not his belt buckle. In which case, remember, Senator Carper, when you're on the road, you always want to grip your junk at 10 and 2. Carper hasn't offered an explanation of his shirtless gas station moment. When asked about it, his spokesperson's only response was, the pristine five-star beaches of Delaware are back and open for business. And Tom Carper would know because I'm guessing he spent the whole weekend there metal detecting. we got a great show for you tonight. My guests are Clive Owen and Z-Way. But when we come back, meanwhile, join us.